Great, so we have begun recording. Thank you everybody for coming to our oversight committee meeting. It's been a couple of months since we had our last meeting in September. And so I wanted to take this opportunity for us to have a quick meeting to update on the three projects that the oversight committee is seeing. And so um, just as kind of a reminder to everybody, this Martinez oversight committee was put together after the November 24th, 25th Bank Catalyst release. And through the direction of the Board of Supervisors, there are three projects that the Oversight Committee is seeing. The first is a community risk assessment that is looking into the effects of soil from catalyst deposition into the affected communities. The second is an independent investigation and root cause analysis of the cause of the incident on November 24th and 25th. And then the third is a safety culture assessment. So I'm going to go ahead and begin with an update on the community risk assessment. Um, at our last meeting on September 21st, we had mentioned that we were in a uh, public notice period when we were also having a public meeting on September 25th. Uh, since then, we have had our public meeting, our public comment period has closed, and we have received comments from the public. Contra Costa Help and TRC, our contractor who performed the community risk assessment, are working together to address those comments. Um, I did want to let everyone know that in terms of timelines, while we did not get um, numerous comments, there were a lot of really good comments that came in. And we are working with TRC because as they reviewed their portion of the comments, they found you know a need to do a a statistical data analysis. And so we have uh, been working with them to get that finalized and get their responses to comments. Once the responses to comments have all been drafted by Contra Costa Health and TRC, we will then work on incorporating those comments into the uh, draft report that we have. And then that report is the report that will be reported out to the Board of Supervisors and the cities. And at that point in time, that will be considered our final report. <clears throat> So that is kind of the update we have there in terms of timeline. I'm hoping that we can get that accomplished um, early in 2024. I know everyone is kind of anxious to have all of the comments addressed and get that report um, finalized. For our second project, this is the uh, in incident investigation and root cause analysis that is being performed by Scott Berger. Before I turn it over to Scott to give his update, I do want to let everyone know where we are um, from there. So, um, you know, a very big portion of the reason that we have the oversight committee is that we are looking for public participation and we want to have a transparent process. So in October, Scott Berger did submit a report to MRC for their um, confidential business information review, and it was sent to the oversight committee. When the oversight committee received that report, our team here at Contra Costa Health, which includes members of our accidental release prevention group with engineering and technical backgrounds, reviewed the report and found items that uh, we wanted to have a technical um, confirmation of. And also the report itself, as this is something that was going to go to the public, we had asked Scott to uh, work with us on rewriting so that it was um, easier for the public to understand. And so uh, with that in mind, in November, the team, so Scott Berger and um, Michael Dossie's team of engineers, went on site to MRC to uh, confirm some of the technical questions that we had surrounding the incident investigation. And then we have a uh, task Scott with uh, revising that report. So the oversight committee was asked to hold off. That report was actually recalled and not considered the draft report. Um, and so after the November 14th site visit to MRC, Scott has been working on the report and I will let Scott now update where we are on um, the report. And then um, we can talk about timeline from there. So go ahead, Scott. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Nicole. Um, and, and I do appreciate um, uh, Michael and Ken Axe from uh, MRC, Michael from the county, and Ken Axe, as well as my uh, partner in, in crime on this uh, on this report, uh, Tim Maloney, uh, because I think uh, that that whole session uh, that was very useful in clarifying a couple of things, which really drove us to I think much um, even better better conclusions than than we had uh, originally. Um, 
So that that report now, um, we finished uh, the the work on it. Uh, yesterday, I I sent the report over to MRC uh, for a uh, it's a forty eight hour uh, review to make sure that we didn't include any uh, confidential business information. I'm I'm pretty confident that we did not. Um, but at, so I think it'll be a formality. But after that, I know MRC probably has their own internal reviews, which Nicole can talk to you about. But then it should, uh, at that point, uh, be available uh, to you pretty shortly. Um, so that's that's our report. Um, it's uh, we're we're very um, very happy with the way it uh, turned out, and appreciate the uh, extra meeting to uh, to work on that. Great, thank you, Scott. And so just to uh, kind of explain the rest of the process from here. So once uh, we receive uh, <laughs> information from MRC, either stating that the report, you know, is uh, good to be distributed to the oversight committee, or if they believe there's confidential business information, which would then require the county to review and have final say on that, the draft report will be released out to the oversight committee. I will give the oversight committee um, two weeks to review the report and to, uh, give me their comments and then we will work the same process as we did with the uh, TRC report. The uh, Any comments from the oversight committee will be incorporated into a draft report and then we will set up a 45-day public comment period including a public meeting so that the public has an opportunity to comment on the draft report and then we will be working with Scott to address any comments from that 45-day public period and then move towards our goal of having that final report put out. Um, Ken, I saw you had had your hand raised. Did you have a comment or question? Just wanted to acknowledge that, yeah, we received the report yesterday afternoon. Um, I haven't seen anything um, that I'm concerned would be a confidential business information um, component to the report. And I think that's going to be the, the conclusion, but um, we're, we're, we've got other people looking at it as well. Great. I will keep my eye out for that notification from MRC. Thank you, Ken. Okay, and then the last uh, project that we have to update on is our safety culture assessment. And I'm going to turn it over to Michael Dossi, um, who has been seeing this part of the project through to give an update on that. Hi everyone. Uh, so the safety culture assessment project uh, is just getting started. So we previously met uh, with the oversight committee and we um, uh, chose Scott Berger and Associates to lead the investigation for the safety culture and we just finally finished the contract in the county for that process and the work has not started yet uh, but uh, the intent is to review the um, safety culture assessment that was completed by uh, MRC and then see if the uh, if there's any gaps that might be in, inside of those that, that that study if so that's what Scott will be focusing on as well as reviewing the recommendation that are being produced by MRC for their safety culture assessment. But to talk further about that, I'll introduce Scott. Uh, if you want to say a few words about uh, your, your intent there, and I think you brought um, someone else all to, also to a, that's going to work on the project with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Ken, Ken and Stevick on the panel, but I hope hopefully he's participating here. And uh, I just promoted so, him. <laughs> okay, great. So Ken and I will be uh, working together on, on that project. Um, and uh, the, the the two of us, uh, I guess we're, I think we probably said this to you during uh, our interview, but, you know, we, we had put together the book uh, for CCPS called Process Safety Leadership from the Boardroom to the Front Line. And that's going to be kind of uh, one of our Bibles as we as we get into this into this project. Um, we did receive the executed contract from the county earlier this week. Um, so we're uh, excited to get going. Um, we have, we are ready to send our first initial document report or request rather to MRC. Um, and uh, what we need to, is basically an updated um, confidentiality agreement. You know, there is already one that we have with MRC for the investigation, but it's, it's specific to the investigation. So we basically need a one line uh, uh, extension to uh, extend it to the the culture assessment project as well. Hopefully that'll happen uh, pretty quickly. Um, but once we once we do that, we'll get the documents and uh, we'll be 
Uh, we'll be reviewing them. Uh, there'll be probably a second uh, document request to follow up on the first one, and then we would come on site uh, to do our our uh, our site work. Uh, that's probably going to be either late January, early February, sometime in in uh, in the next few months. That's where we are. Thank you, Scott. Um, that's about pretty much all we are going to talk. The, the process for the safety culture assessment is going to be identical to the risk assessment and the incident investigation. So after the work is complete, then the draft report is going to be submitted to the oversight committee. Then the oversight committee will have a chance to review that. And then if any comments need to be made, uh, the consultant will address those. Then a public meeting, then eventually going to um, the city of Martinez, as well as the um, board of supervisors for a final report. Great, thank you. And I was able to uh, give uh, Kenan the ability to speak, so I don't know if he wanted to introduce really quickly. Yeah, hi, yeah, I'm Kenan Stevick. Um, I can't seem to find a place where I could show my picture. I, I, I can see all you guys, um, and uh, Zoom has been giving me real problems uh, today. Aha, uh -huh. we lost your audio. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going in and out. I was on a Zoom call earlier today, and it really was problematic. So, <laughs> Okay, I think we may have lost him, but um, we look mm -hmm. forward to hearing more updates from both of you um, in the future as the work progresses. And um, with that, you know, I do anticipate then that we will uh, have um, oversight committee meetings, you know, at a greater frequency than waiting, you know, for three months as we did, as we had kind of a period where work was being done, but we really had no updates to share with the community. So we'll be looking to go back to uh, monthly updates. And I do also want to just let everyone here know that, you know, we are committed still to uh, working as expeditiously as we can to finalize, you know, these last, uh, these three projects that we have going on. And so we are working um, with everybody on the team to uh, keep this going. And with that, that was the end of the updates I had. And before we go to the public comment period, I will open it up to see if there's any open discussion items or comments from the oversight committee members. Yes, Tony. Just a quick one on uh, TRC, the conclusions that they reached, that's not going to change, is it? We're not changing the report. It's just trying to get it so that it's easier to read. Is that my so understanding? TRC is working on addressing uh, the comments that came from the public right now. And there was a lot of comments around, um, excuse me, the uh, background studies that were used. And so they are adding additional information to clarify and help resolve those comments. Okay, thank you. But yeah, you're correct, Tony. I'm not, I don't anticipate at this time there being any changes to any conclusions. Anybody else from the Oversight Committee? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands, so I believe at this time we can open it up to public comment. Um, if you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and we will give two minutes for public comment. Um, Kayla, I saw first Heidi Taylor, then we'll have Alicia Gade, and then Wendy. Great. Um, Heidi, you should be able to come off mute and your two minutes starts now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. For 35 years, Greg Karras was the senior scientist with Communities for a Better Environment. He couldn't be here today, but this is part of his analysis of the Thanksgiving Spent Catalyst release. And Scott, I'm, I'm really hoping that you will hear these comments. Um, clearly, there was a failure to use inherently safer emission control technology, and that's a root cause of the November 2022 particulate matter mass release incident. PBF uses an inferior emission control technology in its fluid catalytic cracking unit that is inherently hazardous because these control devices called electrostatic precipitators or ESPs can spark explosions. 
A superior emission control technology called wet gas scrubbing is inherently safer with respect to this explosion hazard because it does not spark. By using the inherently hazardous ESPs, PBF forced refinery workers to choose between turning off air pollution controls during the incident or risking a possible fatal explosion. Meanwhile, PBF is resisting the superior emission control, which can abate incident air pollution while eliminating the explosion, explosion hazard posed by ESPs in state court with a hearing scheduled next week. I think we all know about that lawsuit. It will be heard nine o'clock next Thursday morning in Martinez. PBF could have replaced its ESPs with wet gas scrubbing. Had it done so, the unabated mass catalyst release would not have occurred. So Scott, please include these points in your root cause investigation 20 seconds. and a list of correction actions, corrective actions. Also, I would like some clarity on the safety culture assessment. I certainly hope that you're not gonna be just looking at an MRC report and going from there. I'm hoping it starts from scratch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. Um, so I do just want to remind everybody that as part of the uh, request for proposal and scope of work that was sent out for the independent incident investigation. We did ask that as part of the incident investigation report, there be a discussion on electrostatic precipitators versus wet gas scrubbers. We did also want to clarify on the safety culture assessment that what we are asking is for MRC to share their safety culture data, not their results and analysis um, with the selected contractor, which is Scott Berger, for a safety culture assessment to be done and that the RFP and scope of work was written such that if um, the consultant that is chosen finds that there is a need for additional assessment or evaluation, um, they will be doing that as part of the safety culture assessment. All right, um, we'll move to Alicia next. Alicia, you should be able to come off mute and I'll start your two minutes now. Hi, my name is Alicia Gaday and I'm here from Healthy Martinez. Um, I am also commenting on behalf of Greg Karras. This is the second part of his statement. An incident can have more than one root cause and it is now clear that upsets in the fluid catalytic cracking plant at the refinery had caused emergency conditions in the hours and days before the November 2022 mass catalyst release. Further, PBF reported sending process gases to flare due to emergency conditions and that this happened before the catalyst release started. That's important because, among other things, it shows PBF was aware of the emergency conditions before the mass catalyst release began. In serious refinery processed hazard emergencies, the safe thing to do in an, is an immediate temporary shutdown of the process unit or plant so that the problem can be found and fixed safely and only then attempt to restart and operate it. This is elemental. It has often been done. It respects our need for safety as well as workers' rights to refuse unsafe working conditions. But when PBF became aware of emergency conditions in the FCC on the morning of November 21st, and especially in the afternoon of November 24th, it did not shut down the catalytic cracker. Had it done so, the mass catalyst release incident would not have occurred. Failure to shut down the fluid catalytic cracking plant upon perceiving uncontrolled emergency conditions in the plant was a root cause of this incident too. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll move to Wendy now. Wendy, you should be able to come off mute and your two minutes will start now. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Wendy Kay from Healthy Martinez and I'm continuing uh, to provide comments from Greg, Greg Karras. Uh, this was his third and final comment at this time. As you know, Greg Karras has asked to review public records related to the catalyst release incident at the PBF Martinez refinery in November, 2022, and reported that the county said it would respond by the 21st of this month. He has shared his request letter with Healthy Martinez. We have a few specific questions about the county's intended response. First, does the county intend to provide for public review 
any management of change analysis performed in connection to an actual or planned change in the type of crude oil refined. Second question, does the county intend to provide for public review any process hazard analysis reports or inherently safer systems analysis reports in connection to the fluid catalytic cracking plant? Third, does the county intend to provide for public review records of any fluid catalytic cracking plant shutdown or turnaround during which the plant was inspected for potential slide valve damage? Would these records include the dates of any such inspections? Would these records describe any potential slide valve damage found? I too thank you for listening to these comments from Greg Karras and ask that uh, Scott Berger please include them in the root cause investigation and list of correct corrective actions. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, you know, Wendy, in response to your comment, I just want to say that we have received Mr. Karras's request and the division is working to provide all responsive documents um, from the documents that we have on um, site. And we will be working uh, to meet that December 21st date um, to provide our response to Mr. Karras. Okay, I'm going to, I see that Kathy has raised her hand. I will also do a last call for uh, public comment right now. So if anyone would like to comment who hasn't had an opportunity to comment, please raise your hand. And Kayla, we'll move over to Kathy. Great. Kathy, go ahead and come off mute and I'll start your two minutes now. Okay. Um, if you can hear me now. <laughs> okay, great. Um, um, I thank everyone who has uh, spoken on this report. Um, I'm also with Healthy Martinez, and um, I, I certainly, you know, endorse all the points that, that they made this morning. And I have a sense of urgency. Uh, the public has a sense of urgency. Uh, part of that is that there is a sense of uh, runaway events in this county. Um, there's overlapping reports, overlapping investigations, reports going back to um, for for changes, uh, reports after those changes may be coming to us. We haven't really seen that yet. Um, this is this is kind of like a galloping um, county in in terms of the events that are happening with refineries, and um, I would li I'd like to signal um, how important this is that this not go on. Um, the, the events that have happened in Martinez, the injury over at Marathon, the four flares that was so outstanding over in Richmond, um, the contamination of, of larger and larger areas um, must be addressed as in the whole picture. I know you're not speaking of that today, but I just wanna address the urgency and I would also like to remind, uh, remind people that, that we have a worker in the hospital. 20 seconds. And um, that we please think of our workers on the front line as we're trying to improve these situations. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for your comments. You know, um, I do want to share that the division is taking all of these incidents are very seriously and everything that we are working on is of the highest priority, not only to finalize these reports and all um, new inspections and reports that we are doing, but also we are taking a much more um, aggressive stance in terms of response to these incidents. We are using um, pretty much every single tool that we have available to us in the industrial safety ordinance right now. Um, when these events occur, we are in having our engineering teams follow up. And I am personally, you know, um, expressing to the facilities how seriously the division is taking this, letting them know that we are going to be having a lot more oversight um, and be present at their facilities more often. And just again, cannot express, you know, 
this is of the highest priority to our division and we are taking it very seriously. And I thank you all for your comments. I know that the timelines can feel like they are very slow and frustrating, but it also is of the utmost important to us that we keep this a very transparent process and that we have this public participation component available to us. And so we will have, you know, built in delays with our public comment period times and our public meetings. But again, it is of the highest priority to the division. So thank you. I see Jillian has raised her hand. So we'll go to Jillian next. Hey, Jillian, if you're able to come off mute and I will start yeah. your two minutes now. Thank you. I'm Jillian Elliott. I'm also with Healthy Martinez. And um, I want, first of all, want to associate myself with um, the re remarks from Greg Harris. Um, Healthy Martinez represents the concerns of our community. And we've invested hundreds of hours, literally, among um, our members um, in learning um, about the refineries and holding so that we can hold them accountable. And this committee has been one of the the areas that one that really have an opportunity to do so. Um, we are uh, not going away. We're con we're going to continue to be involved. But this is a really important um, point, you know, sort of um, milestone in what is possible in terms of making our community safer. And um, I also just want to tip my hat to. I know it's not part of this report, but the person who was injured in that refinery, 80% of his, um, his body burned um, third degree, is has a GoFundMe. Um, and it seems outrageous that in a situation where the refinery is so wealthy um, and injuries happen, that that's an immediate accountability point that, that uh, that the refinery should be held accountable for those kinds of medical bills. But in the meantime, I really urge you to listen and follow the direction um, of Greg Karras and others who have expressed their concerns. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And I see we have a Greg Karras has his hand raised, so we will allow him a public comment period time. Thank you, Kayla. Mm -hmm. Okay, Greg, you should be able to come off mute and I'll start your two minutes now. Hi, Greg Karras, Community Energy Resource. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, so the conflict that I had got canceled at the last minute, and I just got on the Zoom and heard the last um, couple speakers. And um, so I, you know, <laughs> they uh, they have said what I have to say for now. Uh, the only reason I I um, am talking with you at this very moment is to let you know that I am here. I got unfortunately. You couldn't get here until just now, but I am available to answer questions if you have any of me. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I do not see any additional hands raised for public comment period. And I don't see any hands raised um, from any members of the oversight committee. And so with that, um, Greg will be our final commenter. Um, as I stated, as we are moving forward, we will be looking to have um, more frequent meetings of the Oversight Committee so that we can update everyone on the progress that we are making. And um, just a you know, quick FYI to everybody, we are rolling out a new website for Contra Costa Health. No web pages will be going away, but I will try to ensure that we uh, still have at the very forefront a way for everybody to be able to find all of the recordings and meeting minutes and updates from the Oversight Committee. And for anyone who has joined today um, that is not part of our constant contact list, I do encourage you to also go to our website and sign up as that is the best way to uh, know about the upcoming Oversight Committee meetings. Um, and again, thank you, Scott, for providing your updates and for, um, you know, working so quickly to get the safety culture assessment started now that we have contracts in place. And again, thank you to all the oversight committee members for all of the work that you have done over this last year uh, for all of these projects. We really appreciate your time. Nicole, would you like me to make any comments about the, the feedback from the public or you want me to wait until the next meeting? Um, I think we will be holding off until we have a draft report, um, but I appreciate okay. that, Scott. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Have a nice holiday. Thank you. You too. You too.